Right, so I'm underneath here again, and I'm just trying to get this uh, M22 um, little union into the hole so I can fit my accumulator. Welcome to this video about my Maserati Gran Turismo. In this video, I'm going to install an oil accumulator, and you might be wondering why I'm doing this. So the earlier Gran Turismos had an issue with um, variators, as did many cars in that sort of era. So Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Mercedes, Alfa Romeos, they all had a similar sort of problem. The variators weren't quite as durable as they could or should have been. In the Gran Turismo, this is perhaps slightly worse in that you've got a large oil gallery. And when you go to start the engine, the oil is typically drained down into the sump and it takes a while to pump that oil up and get it to the variators. And in that time, the variators are spinning around and they're getting metal on metal contact. So after a number of starts, 5,000, 15,000, 50,000, maybe even 100,000 miles, um, they wear and they start making a noise. The noise on mine is like a whirring sound. Others make like a staccato sort of type noise, which I'll stick up now. The best way of solving this problem and the service bulletin that Maserati issued addressing this to the dealers is that you take off the cam covers, you take off the cam caps, you get a oil way drilled into them and a check valve put in that keeps the oil at the top of the engine or a little bit of oil at the top of the engine so that when you go to start it, there's oil ready. The other part of that service bulletin then addresses changing the variators for a better design, a later design. So if you have a Maserati Gran Turismo with an engine number less than 148697, and unless it's been changed, of course, then you've probably got the bad variators. And of course, mine has. They did change some car's variators under warranty. Obviously, mine's miles out of warranty, so that's not an option for me. So that's basically the, the background of the problem. Now, my situation is, is I know I need to change the variators. I know I need to get it all done. It's about 1500 quid. I could do with waiting a little while before I um, demand another 1500 pounds from my meager resources. I also need some space to do it in. This thing's in the way, I'm still finishing her off. And I really need a proper, you know, this this environment I've got in here to do the job in because it's going to take me yeah, maybe a couple of weeks because obviously I work as well and stuff like that. But also I need a, a decent environment. It would be nicer if it was warmer because you don't want to be dismantling half of the front of the engine on the drive where the wind is going to go blow dust and dirt into the engine and cause all kinds of problems. So that's kind of why I would like to delay this problem a little while. So I was looking through the forum and some people have been fitting oil accumulators. And the idea is, is that the accumulator, when you turn the key, either on a switch or a timer, a solenoid will open and the accumulator will dump its oil into that oil gallery and fill up all the oil routes in the engine to get oil to the top of the variators so that when the engine starts, it's already pre-lubricated. That's supposed to increase the life of the variators, but my variators are already slightly damaged. She makes noise one out of every four starts at the moment. Sometimes one out of every three times you start it, it will make the noise. So I'm hoping that this oil, by pre-oiling it, I will just delay the time when it when I have to actually just tear the engine front of the engine apart and do this job. So that's kind of reasons why I'm doing this oil accumulator. And I, I believe it will be a reasonable sticking plaster solution, if you like, a reasonably good temporary solution just to get me around this point so that when it's a bit warmer and when I've got some space and some more money, I can do the job properly. So here's all the parts you need to install an accumulator. I'm gonna put all the part numbers up and prices so you can see. Obviously you've got the big thing, which is the accumulator, the big expensive bit. Then you've got a half inch NPT to BSP fitting, a solenoid valve. 
You've got the adapter to go to JIC10 uh, or AN10. You've got a 90 degree fitting. These are push fittings, uh, push fit fittings. Then you've got the 5 8 um, error quick pipe that uh, obviously goes down into a straight fir tree fitting that then that goes onto an adapter, which is M22 by 1.5, which is actually the bit that goes into the engine, into the oil port. So the first job was to actually install that M22 by 1.5 uh, adapter that goes into this little oil port on the side of the engine. That's actually the oil gallery in there as well. Right, so I'm hoping this is working, this camera. So there's the fit in there. So the lower port is the coolant, I think. And this is a port straight into the oil distribution galleries. Um, so the pro reason why you can't get a socket on is there's that, that bit there that's very close. If I would have gone for smaller than 3 8 pipe, a size down from that, which I can't remember what it would be, I'll stick it up, um, which some people have used, then this union joint here would be slightly smaller and I'll be able to get the socket on earlier. I should be able to get my socket on though fairly soon. Another thing you could do, of course, is grind the socket down slightly to make it that bit more narrower. My socket's a pretty thin wall, so I can't grind much of them. I wish I'd done that now, but that was last night and I was knackered. I really want to be careful not to screw this up, not to cross the threads, because if you did that, oh, I don't know. I mean, the plugs that go in there are taper, so if you did mess up the plug slightly, you could put the port plug back in, forget the accumulator, and it would probably seal up, but yeah. You really don't want to mess this up. So you hopefully can see, that's the bar fitting for the um, push fit hose. Push fit just seems wrong to me, but anyhow. Everyone's saying it's great, so I have to go with what everyone says. That's, you know, racing people and all kinds of people. I'm a little bit worried that I haven't got enough clearance around this. I don't know what that is. Coolant hose, I think it might be. Um, it's, it'll have enough clearance to the, that's the um, dipstick. Um, I have enough clearance there, but whether it has enough around here this little coolant hose here, I'm not sure. Then I might be okay. I'll take this off and uh, let's go put the push fit on and see what it does. We're all nicely up and to talk now, so I'm quite happy with it. Right, so this tube should be good for around about 200 psi or 400 psi, certainly above the pressure of the the engine so I've got a fairly straight nice surface there I've got some hot water here and I've put this in the vise and hopefully this will work because apparently if it doesn't you actually have to cut the tube off again um, to try and get it in so I'm just putting it in the hot water just to make the tube a little bit more supple particularly in this weather it's a lot warmer than yesterday but still Perhaps that much is enough, maybe a little bit more. And then I'm hoping I can push this all the way on correctly in one hit. So there you go. So the red collar, it's fully engaged in the red collar. I can't turn the red collar, so that means I must have it nice and tight there. That should all be good. Now I can go and hopefully fit it to the car. Right, so what I'm doing now is I'm just prepping up my accumulator to fit. So I'm putting oil in it already, and then I'm gonna seal the valve. The reason is, is the very first start after the oil change, she's gonna have a pre-oil. And it also means I've got all the sort of air and bits and, you know, the air out of this and out of the pipework, sort of purged it a little bit. 
So how you do this is you use one of these little valve thingies to take out the um, inner valve. It's just a standard Schroeder, Schroeder valve thingy like you have on a tire. That gets rid of the pre-charge. Then I used my Mankey chopstick. I have to clean it before I try using that to eat any food again. Um, to push the piston all the way down. And now with that all ready and the valve back in place, I can just fill the oil through the end here, like so. So it's one and a half quarts. I can't think how much that is in litres. Um, this is a litre though, so I'm imagining I need a bit more than this in there. And then what it means is the very first start after the oil change is going to be pre-oiled, which just sounds good to me. Right, I'm using a US solid valve. It's a new, um, yeah, electric solenoid valve. I'm gonna have to wire up somehow. Um, what this will do is it will, it's normally closed. You press a button or connect it to a timer would probably be the best thing. It will dump the oil out, the accumulator into the engine. The engine will start. And then when the engine's had a few seconds, minutes of running, then you can, operate the valve again and that will allow the oil back into here to fill the accumulator back up with oil again and then you shut the valve and it's ready for the next start so there we go all assembled up all ptfe taped on this one fill up with filled up with oil i'm not going to put the pre-charge in until um she's actually ready to run which will probably be in a week or two um because it's you've run it to 100 psi so i just need to go fit this figure out where my push fit goes hose goes and that should be that i managed to tip the oil through that hole or through that hole all the way in all the way to the end without spilling a drop and then suddenly it went up this tube and went everywhere <laughs> but it looked good for a while yeah Right, so what I'm doing now is I'm just preparing this accumulator. So I've managed to fit it just underneath the engine covers here. So here's the accumulator, a shut off valve that came with the accumulator, the electric solenoid valve, and then I've got this union, and then I've managed to get the pipe to go down there and down into the port that's underneath the car. <clears throat> it seems to be quite a good fit. I just need to run that round slightly. As for how I'm going to link it on, I think I might just use um, zip ties and a little bit of uh, foam or something like that at the moment and just see how it sits. I mean, it, it sits in there quite nice. I just need to make sure it doesn't rub on any pipes or anything. It's not going anywhere. Make sure it doesn't run into my sky hook. So that's the sky hook cable coming up there. So I've got to put the positive wire in for the solenoid. So I've taken out the cat plate there that comes up here and I've found, oh, the kick plate comes out with these little, you just pull them out gently, so wiggle them out. Um, I say kick plate, whatever that is, kick panel. Anyway, up there, there's the um, rubber for the thingy that goes through to the engine bay. So I've just used a sharp file to make a hole and that's where I'm gonna bring the wire through. That's the positive wire. The negative wire is going to go onto the skyhook suspension mount and just ground there. And then I'm going to take the, the positive feed wire from the cigarette lighter round here to a switch. Later on, it will be a timer when I can figure out how on earth I fit a timer. Right, well, a mixture of hooks um, made out of welding wire like this. I've managed to finally pull it up. What I did is I got a piece of welding wire like this and actually um, pushed it down the end of the the cable about that far into the cable and then you could use that as like a the feed to get it through right quick stock take on this accumulator so i set up a battery here to operate the solenoid valve now you can see i've been doing the gearbox at the same time that's a interesting job to try and combine 
I've got my wire through from interior, but I've not wired it up yet. So I'm just using jumper leads on these to manually operate the solenoid valve. So to pre-oiler, I filled her with 100 PSI of pressure and I'd already filled the accumulator up as I showed before. So this morning I filled it with 100 PSI of pressure, opened the valve, opened the solenoid and you could hear this sort of glug 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 as about a litre of oil went directly into all the engine oil gallery and pressurised probably up to the top of the variators here. Then I had to quickly pressurise this up to 40 PSI. Then I shut the valve and then waited. Then I started the engine. I did the oil change or filling the oil mostly on the gearbox. And then I pressurised this to 6 PSI or let the pressure out down to 6 PSI. And it was ready. And then before I shut her down, I opened up the valves and she's now got 38 PSI, 35 PSI of pressure and oil is in here and you can feel it's nice and warm from all the oil that's filled it up. Right, so I'm just about to go for engine start now. So here's the accumulator, it's at 35 PSI. I have to do this two-handed, so I'm gonna click on like this. There you go, now it's gone down to zero PSI. I'm going, oh, it's let off so it can stay like that. Now I'm going to start the car. And no noise, which is good. Right, so I was rather annoyed earlier because I went up here and saw loads of oil coming out. And there was loads of oil on the filter, but there's nothing there now. The big news to report is, is after two weeks of being sat, complete engine oil drain, she started up absolutely smooth. There was no variator noise at all. Now, as said, sometimes she doesn't make any variator noise. So I can't say for certain that's fixed it, but it's good that after two weeks in a complete oil change and you know, having nothing in the oil gallery at all, it was completely bone dry in there you know, to then have no variator noise. It's a good sign. It's a good sign. As I say, this isn't going to be a permanent fix, but if it can get me past the next few months, years, no, few months, because as I say, to do the variators, you have to remove all of this. You have to move this bar, the whole timing cover off the front, the cam caps, I'll have to remove all of this. And it'll be a job where I do the coolant pipes as well at the same time. So it's about 1500 quid's worth of parts and you know quite a sort of difficult two or three weeks and a lot of stress trying to make sure that I get the timing right so I have to have dial gauges and do it all per the manual I've done that sort of thing before so on aircraft engines as well so you know it doesn't necessarily worry me but it is a bit stressful and you have to make sure you get it right obviously so that's the update on the variator and that's about as far as I think I can take it in this video um this is going to be fairly straightforward. I'm just wiring one onto here, then the ground onto here, that onto the positive. I'll put a switch inside for now. Um, and then later on, I'm going to get a timer so that when you turn the ignition on, it dumps the oil. You wait five seconds and then it shuts the oil thing properly first. And then you start the engine up and then I have it. So one minute after engine start, it opens the valve up again to fill up the accumulator again ready for the next start so that's the best way of doing it then it's completely fit and forget but at the moment it's going to be jiggering around with a switch i think because you know i ain't got time to do all of that at the moment but yeah i'm fairly happy and i'm fairly hopeful i think that brings me to the end of this one so if you uh, enjoyed this video and it was useful please consider liking and subscribing thanks very much and uh, see you again Thank you.